We talk about all kinds of gimmicks, gadgets, uh, scent control, contraptions, whatever it might be to up your hunting game. But I think really if we just go back to our hunting roots and, and really attack our land as if we were a predator when we're hunting, then I think we can slow down and we can actually experience a much higher level of success. And, and I'll say the opposite of that might be using the ATV to drive right to a blind. I've been to blinds where someone in the ATV will actually park the ATV in a garage under the blind. And you can imagine, um, I've been on properties for 30 years where ATVs, back to the old ATCs, the three-wheelers, were spooking deer off my neighbor's land and I'd set up to capitalize on those movements and I still do that today. Getting on and off your property without spooking game and really acting like a predator is an incredible tactic that I think is often overlooked in, the, in today's society of all the different gimmicks and gadgets that we have. In this case, we have a couple ridge systems here, and they're kind of twin ridge systems on two sides of this valley. And this is a location where we can use these ridges to our advantage greatly. Now, the worst thing we could do would be to climb up this ridge, walk 20 yards on the flat above, climb into a tree stand, and literally expose ourselves to every deer that's within three, 400 yards up in the hills to the, to the south here. No deer down in this valley, so we can walk through this valley, not spook any game. And in the case of this first spot right here, what we're doing is we're starting about halfway up the ridge and then we're climbing up the tree and we're literally getting just above the crest of the ridge and watching a water hole in a mock scrape and the deer movement that comes from the food plot beyond a couple hundred yards away. The next one, we're actually walking up the, the ridge. We're getting into the stand behind a lot of brush within some big trunks and we're just climbing up a little bit. I think we're only up about 12 feet high in that case because again, we don't want to expose ourselves to the deer that might be above. Those deer up on those tops up there are completely hidden. You can't see them from anywhere. You can't spook them from anywhere. So unless we expose ourselves to those areas, which I think a lot of hunters do at times, then um, we're not going to spook any deer. Now we have a third location that we're going to go look to too, or go check out, or we're going through a low area. We're using the lay of the land, the weeds, an old fence row. And then once we get to the blind location in that case, we have a large area of Egyptian wheat planted and switchgrass to where we can get into, in and out of that blind with a 20, 30 deer out in the food plots and not spook them. So in both cases, we're using the lay of the land, we're adding a little bit with the switchgrass and, and the other property, but we're trying to get on and off the property without ever spooking game. And so if you know you're gonna spook game, if the deer are gonna hear you, see you, before you even leave your truck, then you're never gonna experience the pinnacle of what hunting is all about and what you can actually achieve by hunting like a predator on your land. And so we're trying to hunt like a predator. You know, I'm a, I'm a clumsy guy and, and uh, you know, I can't go through this property like a big cat could. Um, but at the same time, I'm trying to take every little bit of the angle and every advantage that I can take, including using these ridges, some Egyptian wheat, the lay of the land, the low areas to get on and off the property without spooking any game. If you can do that each season, then your success rate's gonna skyrocket. And, uh, and truly, I think the deer herd, low stress, they can live on your land without being spooked. And, um, and you're gonna have better hunting success for it. I think you're gonna hold a lot more deer and your ability to grow and hold and actually shape a deer herd excels as well. Now, when we're trying to access like a predator, and using the lay of the land to get onto this parcel. We obviously have planted a lot of Egyptian wheat behind me. You can see that it's probably about 12 feet tall. So we actually have a redneck blind in the middle of that. But you can see we have about three acres of food plots behind that Egyptian wheat. And we can walk in and out of this location by staying low and accessing behind that, that wall of Egyptian wheat and not spook the deer out in the food plot. So we can get in and out of that blind. It's an awesome setup. We shot a couple bucks and a doe out of that last year. Had some good times we can't wait till this year at the same time we don't access past that it's a real temptation because the access road for the entire property goes right through the middle of this valley and switchbacks up all the way to the top behind me you know previous hunters uh you know seven eight years ago they'd use a uh, atv to get to the top now we hunted the adjoining land and we had sometimes 30 40 deer in our laps just by the time the atv was coming through here before it even got got onto the property so really important that we don't access past this point. It's a stopping point. We avoid the temptation of getting there easily. But what we do do is we have a ridge over here and we have a ridge over here, two points that come down. Now when we access to the top, 
and off to the sides we're accessing on either side of the point that comes down and making sure that we never walk through this valley right here that we literally never walk through this valley because this entire bull system in here holds a lot of deer and if we keep even though it's harder even though it takes a long time to get to the top sometimes we walk all the way up this side over to the top it takes 50 minutes to get in literally on 40 acres we're taking 50 minutes to get into a stand but the bottom line is we're avoiding this entire central bull area we're holding deer on the property, we're accessing like a predator, we're staying out of the deer's way. And for that, I believe that we have some great hunting and we can experience some great hunts. And I think you can too, if you learn to use the lay of your land, establish these core large areas that can move in and out, whether you're making hinge cuttings, planting Egyptian wheat. I've had clients that have built berms, but uh, we're fortunate to have some man-made or God-made uh, berms out here. So um, try it access your land like a predator and you'll enjoy it this hunting season.